The art that comes out of these models can be really striking. I think it's incredible that you get to generate this stuff just from a text description. And of course, it's really wild that it's being generated by an AI. That's really cool. So for this series though, we wanna go beyond just that initial wow moment, that initial reaction to, to what you see and create art that I'd consider more usable, something that's more on par with what a, a decent human artist could create. And I think uh, that means we've got some higher standards. We're gonna be a little more critical of these generations. And I think if, if that's your goal as well, then I'm hoping I can, I can save you some frustration by sharing some insights about what these models seem to be able to do currently uh, versus not. I'm hoping that'll save you from spending a bunch of time feeling frustrated, trying to fine tune and refine a prompt to get the model to hopefully generate something that really it's just not quite capable of yet, especially just from a text prompt. So let's take a look at this. The, the thing that seems to be the most possible currently is to create really compelling portraits. So if you browse something like Lexica, you'll see a lot of these. It seems to be um, easiest to do if, if the portrait has a fair amount of symmetry, which I think all of these do. And you'll notice it's kind of a head-on view, um, not a lot of emotion displayed in the faces, unfortunately, that's another aspect to it. But they're really compelling. I, I think these are for sure um, of the quality that I'm looking for in terms of what I'm hoping to get from this. And uh, because it, it, it's so effective at this, um, you're starting to see apps and websites that will fine tune the model on your face and then it's able to generate cool portraits like these um, with your face as the subject. So that's really cool. And it doesn't just have to be symmetrical and head on. There are, I am seeing good examples um, from different perspectives. Uh, and then another another technique that you'll see a fair amount is it seems to do do well if you use a celebrity face as the as the subject since there's more it seems to have a better understanding of uh, what celebrities look like versus generating something novel. So that's really cool. Um, I'd say in general though we'll start kind of talking here about the some of the challenges and limitations. In general, I'd say these models seem to have just incredible artistic technique. I just, I think the, um, their ability to work with, with lighting in particular just seems really impressive to me. Uh, so th I think that's where the, that big wow factor comes from is just that the, the quality of the art in some way, I'm not sure the right terminology to use. Quality just seems really high. But the, the biggest problem seems to be that, um, a lot of what it generates just isn't rational. It, it's it's this crazy uh, paradox or uh, problem where it's able to, it has incredible artistic talent and yet it, it just has a really poor understanding of the world, it seems like. So so this is one of my favorite examples for that is this fighter jet. Um, it's, it's certainly very novel. I've never seen a jet look like this before and it's painted beautifully, but you know, the model doesn't understand that um, there are certain requirements to a jet. It tends to be symmetrical, aerodynamic, tends to have one or two engines, um, cockpit in front, I, you know, you get the idea. Um, so in general, structured objects seem to be a problem. Objects where there's there's just kind of requirements to what it what it should look like based on its function, I think. So weapons, right, it's like it, it's pretty interesting. It's, um, you know, again, lighting is cool. There's certainly weapon components in here, but totally inco incoherent, irrational. Um, buildings, there's a similar problem here where beautiful image, but where's the front door? And eh, the steps are a little weak, right? So it just, it doesn't understand that there's there's requirements to a house. The, it's usually got windows on the sides, a door to enter it. Um, so those are, those are some other good examples. And then maybe one of the most frustrating structural objects that it, it struggles with is the human body. So it, it has trouble getting anatomy just right. Um, that said, it is 
it, it, it is possible to generate pretty decent figures and you'll see plenty of examples of that. And with the most recent uh, version, version 2.1, they've introduced some cool stuff that if, if you can provide a starting image, uh, it seems like you can take care of this pretty well. But um, if you're generating from 1.5, for example, you're gonna, you're gonna struggle a bit with getting um, generations where the anatomy just isn't quite right, yeah? So, you know, this is decent. Um, it's posed in a, in a reasonable way, so that's nice. Um, hips are way too big, arms too long, forearms too, too thick. So that's a good example of where it's like, ah, oh, it's so close, but, but wrong, right? <laughs> it's just kind of, it's, it's screwed up. And then um, I've had trouble, uh, any kind of seated position it seems to struggle with because it, it can't quite get the legs right. You know, her legs are supposed to be kind of crossed here, and uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's clearly struggling with that. Uh, and then maybe the most disappointing thing of all, <laughs> I'd say, is that it really struggles with hands. Um, again, another thing that it seems to be getting better at, but it's still, it's still a challenge. And the most frustrating aspect of that is that in not only does it struggle struggle with hands, but it, it, it can't get hands to interact correctly with objects. Um, so whenever a character is supposed to be holding something or using something, it tends to both screw up the hand as well as the object because it, it just doesn't seem to know how to position it. Um, so here, you know, these are supposed to be some swords and you can, you can see it's just a bit of a mess. And the hand, Again, like, ah, oh, man, the lighting, you know, it's great, but like, oh, that's not what fingers are supposed to look like. Um, or over here, she's, it's kind of, you know, it's almost there to a decent hand gripping the hilt of a sword. So that's, it's, it's for, that's relatively impressive compared to a lot of stuff that, that comes out. But again, it's, it's missing the, <laughs> it's missing the blade and um, doesn't have a good structural understanding of what the hilt should look like. Yeah, some more examples of, of hand interactions. These are some relatively decent examples coming out of uh, 1.5. So try to generate someone interacting with a book. It's like that's you don't really hold a book this way, right? You kind of you hold it from the bottom, and um, positioning the book is is a little screwed up there. Holding a cup is Brad Pitt eating a burrito. Is what? Uh, again, yeah, close, relatively close for this model, but pretty bad. So another thing that it does seem to, to do pretty well at is generating scenery. Um, just these like uh, landscape photography, landscape paintings. There are, if you if you really scrutinize it, then some of the content is, is relatively illogical, but yeah, you know, pretty, pretty compelling, I think. Um, I don't know if you'd call this a like scenery or a scene, but these kind of concept art scenes, um, it does beautifully. This is kind of like the, the steampunk workshop that we generated. Um, beautiful again, but then also just kind of lacking in, in rational structure. So what is this object exactly? Is it a, is it a building? Is it a ship? Kind of looks like a ship to me. Part of the prompt was for it to make an airship. Um, but it doesn't have legs that make sense, right? The landing gear, like what, what's all this going on? And maybe the buildings in the background too, if you looked at them closely, it's like, yeah, there's, there's not really, the detail doesn't quite make sense. So um, it's another one where it's sort of halfway there, but not quite. And Similar to that, ish, uh, that image of the, of the women supposed to be holding swords, what I seem to most often want to generate when I feel inspired to, to create something with this is some kind of subject, right? A character um, acting on an object in a setting. <laughs> and this seems to be just a little too, com uh, too complex for it. So here I'm looking for a blacksmith forging a sword in his workshop. And again, man, the lighting, so cool. Um, but this hand, 
kind of screwed up. Should be should be holding a hammer, really. Uh, and the sword should be down here. But we just don't see that there. And then beautiful costume. But um, again, sort of irrational contents to the costume, right? Like what this belt is, is cool looking. Um, but what is it exactly? It doesn't really make sense. So... This, I would say, this is really my main goal. I would love to be able to use this, these models to, to create scenes that, that tell a small story, right? And I'm hoping we can get there by using some, some more advanced techniques um, to, to put together a successful image. And then one other one other issue I think you'll you'll run into it's it's not a huge problem because it just it will ruin some of your generations but not all um, when you it was trained on square images and so if you leave that aspect ratio and ask it to generate something more rectangular it often um, has trouble with sort of like repeating the frame so I think you can you can kind of tell in this image what's going on it's like if this were just a square image, then it's really close to getting this right. Yeah, it's got like a, a decent um, uh, framing here of an alien playing a guitar. But then suddenly, you know, it, it, it's like it's, it generated another square image up here that also is halfway there. And then it's like trying to blend the two. So I'm really curious to, to better understand the mechanics of, of this issue, but... Uh, all I can say at the moment is just that it was trained on square images and that seems to create problems when you're, you're generating different aspect ratios. So that wraps up episode one. We took a little detour there to talk about the strengths and weaknesses of stable diffusion. But in the next episode, we'll get back to covering the remaining basics of how to actually generate stuff. Uh, if you remember, we skipped over a lot of the other knobs that are in here in Dream Studio. So I'll actually start the next episode with a bit of a tutorial on how Stable Diffusion actually works, how it actually generates images. Uh, because I think some of that knowledge is going to help in um, explaining some of these other parameters and give you a better understanding of what you're actually playing with. So, see you then.